Hello everyone, in this video I will teach you guys how to make a coffee table like this with hockey cards and epoxy resin. There will be a bonus video within this video of me working on my workshop and getting it right as I go through it in the next couple, in the last couple months when I was filming this. The first step is to use adhesive glue like this, I'm using Elmer's, and then grab some hockey cards. I'm doing three tables, so I'm doing one with the uh, Team Canada, one with my local junior team, and an NHL one. You do the process of taking the glue, placing the cards, and gluing them down. Now this can be a long process or a short process. I like to make them overlap a little bit because I think that looks better and kind of make it look like they've just kind of fallen off. You could probably do it more organized if you want. After you do glue one layer, you have to do multiple layers. So here's me going through, adding more cards, kind of filling in the gaps. I waited a day in between so they could um, get firmly attached, but that is not necessarily necessary. This is how the final project looks like. I like to have a bit of an overhang here because I think it looks better, but that's all personal preference. The next step after the glue's dried is to cut off the edges. I used just a blade to get it on all four edges. So the next part is the epoxy and I won't go into detail how to actually do it because there's just better uh, tutorials online on YouTube that get into it more. I'm using Total Boat Tabletop Epoxy because a tutorial I watched two, uh, a year ago said it was the best. But I had a lot of trouble getting this into Canada or finding a place that would sell it to me in Canada. I don't know if it's just hard to buy period or just into Canada. So maybe another brand would be better. Uh, for my next project, I might try another brand, but it's the one I'm using now. I also went to Dollarama uh, and bought some drop cloths to, for the area, some spatulas. You can use the, like, the stir sticks that come with paint, but Rona and Home Depot like want to put you in jail if you steal them, apparently. So I just went out and bought some dollar spatulas. And then also a plastic um, measuring cup. Additionally, I also got this plastic tape that the epoxy doesn't stick to, and some uh, foam core poster board. The first step is to cut the poster board into the width of the table, and then cut these small strips. Uh, you'll need to surround the table, so if it's the same width, you need four per table. Or if you need two strips for a side, for the longer side, you'll need uh, six. After they're all cut, you take your tape and cover them with tape on both sides. Make sure you don't let any poster board be seen through it. And do this for all the strips. Next, you take the strips and tape them onto the table, making sure it is tape against tape. Making sure you seal in the bottom like this so no epoxy gets out underneath. Next, you take the tape and cover the edges of the table with it making sure you are smooth and flat as much as possible. I like to rotate the table and just do all one long strip, but that's kind of personal preference. You don't want it to overhang the top side too much, but the bottom side doesn't really matter all that much if you overhang. Okay. 
Next, I took the drop cloth and put it down under where I'm going to pour in my shop so I don't get epoxy everywhere. So here is me mixing the epoxy up, mixing it one part to one part. Again, I'd suggest looking at other tutorials online how to do this properly. Once the epoxy is poured, mix it up with the spatula or the stick. After you're done mixing, make sure you bring it from one container to another container. This way it helps with bubbles and everything else. When I pour, pour, I like to go outside in. So go kind of around the corners and pour it. After the pour is done, you have to take a heat gun and uh, heat it up to get rid of the bubbles. As you do it, you can kind of see it becoming more clear. It'll also run a bit differently because it changes consistency. If you start to smell like burning plastic, that means you're holding it on a place for too long. So you have to kind of move it around like I am. Uh, may not block half the frame like I am though. So with epoxy, the first layer they call it the, the sealant layer because you're kind of sealing everything, putting it down. The second layer is kind of the main layer with the most epoxy and that kind of sets what it'll look like. Then the third layer, you're kind of going in and filling the holes that you have like around the edges or I uh, get kind of some wavy stuff here because I probably burnt it a bit too much. Between the second and third layer, I like to give it a lot of time but I don't know if you should. Another thing to worry about when you're using epoxy is everything gets this like cum stained whatever and you kind of ruin like every stick you use, every container you use just kind of gets ruined and you'll never be able to use it again for anything ever as garbage. So that's why I have a drop cloth. That's why I bought five of these containers and three of those spatulas. Just so then, when things get ruined, it's not a big deal. And uh, clothing, that's why I wore coveralls. After your pores, it should be uh, good. So what you can do is see how much epoxy you wasted and take this stuff off. I should grab a knife. There we go. So this comes off. And you kind of get to see the edges. So that comes off pretty easily, but then this next part of the tape is rather difficult. I used red tape because last time I used clear tape and it was so hard to see. Red tape gives you a bit of a visual indicator. So, uh, things like these, like, you get like a plastic chunk here, right? So 
So when you got tape off, it kind of gets gooey. So get some goo gone. Spray that on there. And the goo is gone. Not really. You have to really work this in and causing an issue and it sucks, especially because like the um wish get difficult. Kind of sucks too because like the wood's really thin, like it's a veneer. So this step requires a lot of patience, what I don't have, which sucks. So I use an or I use an orbital sander, I suggest it. Then you start with like 120, then get it kind of smooth, like get the um big imperfections out. Then do this is 220, then 320, then 400. Then I'll do 800 and 1200, but I don't have them here right now because apparently no one in my city does fine sanding and I couldn't find them in the four stores I went to. But that is what you'll be doing. So this is going to take forever. <laughs> me to do that works pretty good is a uh, wet um, sand which you should probably have a spray ball but I don't have one out here so I'm just put water in a coffee cup and it's going to get absolutely everywhere but whatever I have to clean up anyways so every once in a while what you do is you take isopropic alcohol put it on and use that to um, wipe it off. So the eagle eye amongst you might notice that this is a different table. This is the one I made a year ago. After a year it um, kind of got bad. I did a bad pour here anyways. So I brought it here so I can do another um, sanding of it. I was starting with the, this one I started at with the 400 grit and worked up just to get it smooth. So after you sand it with the different grits, you have to polish it. I'm using this ultimate compound, which I'll probably end up regretting. But I couldn't find what I wanted. Um, you can want a very aggressive compound and then a lighter compound. I was hoping that this might just let me do one. But we will see if I eat my words. I'm also using a, like a buffer. Uh, what's it called? Orbital buffer. I uh, actually bought it just for this. But I will think I'll find uses for it. Thanks for watching. Please let me know if you have any questions or concerns about this. And I hope your table works out as good as mine.